What's up guys, this is Technocube and you are watching Mobile Computing Fundamentals. So we're going to understand cellular system in this session. Okay, so why cellular system is because you know you have devices, mobile devices like you're having Nokia, Samsung, Lenovo and many more. So all these systems, it, inst it instead of using wireless network, it uses cellular network. You call it as wireless network, but ex exactly it is cellular system. Okay. So uh, in this session, what we're going to understand is uh, like what are the what is the basic thing in cellular system? What are what are its advantages? What are its disadvantages and stuff like that? So you see a cellular system it needs or you can say it needs a geographic area a very huge geographic area and in that geographic area it needs an infrastructure. Okay, but in wireless network it doesn't need it doesn't need like that. Okay, you just need interconnected devices and then you need to connect it and there we go. We have the wireless network. But here in this system, I need an access point, I need my mobile station, I need my base station, I need my mobile switching center, I need a complete infrastructure to connect my mobile device to the other mobile device. Okay, so let's understand. So you first understand that in the cellular system, the base is something called as this. This is the area. We call it as area and we precisely draw the area in the form of hexagon. Okay. So this is known as geographic area. This is my geographic area. We call this geographic area as cell. So this is the cell. This is the, you know, th this thing you have to remember it. When you combine two or three cells, uh, you know, merge with this cell, then it is going to be known as clusters. I'll tell, I'll tell you later. So this cellular system, it is using a multiplexing technique, technique, and that multiplexing technique is known as. So I'll precisely write it down here that it it uses multiplexing technique, which is known as SDM. I hope you had seen it. This is known as space division space division multiplexing okay now what do you mean by space division multiplexing i already told you about this that in this geographic area or in this cell how efficiently you put your access point or the base station is or it can be done with the help of space division multiplexing how efficiently if you put your antennas in a good manner in a good and effective manner then your communication is going to be strong right your communication is going to be effective communication so how efficiently you put your antennas in this particular cell to make an effective communication this is our base okay so that is the you know that is the thing that space division multiplexing does here so this is an effective communication so how exactly you can do that is with the help of SDM and I already told you about that how SDM works. So SDM is having uh, four types of mechanism. So these four types in the previous session I told you about but let me remind uh, let, let me just recall it. So four types is known as MIMO. First one is MIMO that is multiple input multiple output. Then it is known as MISO that is multiple input single output. Then it is known as CISO that is single input single output and then there is something called as CMO that is single input multiple output. These are the four techniques by which you can efficiently put your antennas. How efficiently, how efficiently you put your antennas. In a cell. Okay, that's that's the uh, you know that that's the technique that SDM possesses. So that's your SDM that is space division multiplexing. Now what ha exactly happened in cellular system? You understand SDM? This is the base of cellular system that you have to write it down in the first very first point, and then we have to deal with each in the cell. I'll write it down in a cell. There is a transmitter which we call as base station. There is a transmitter. We call in the cellular system a base station. And in the short abbreviated form, it is no, it is written as BS. Okay, inside the cell or inside the geographic area, we call it as transmitter. 
now you see there is one more thing that your cell the cell cell radii it differs from location to location so your cell can be very from 10 meters for building if it if your access point or the transmitter is uh, on the roof of your building then it is in the range of 10 meters or maybe you know a gap of 10 meter to 10 meter then it is a, a, a radii of 100 meters if we talk about cities 100 meters or 100 kilometers and it could be a thousand meters or kilometers if we talk about countryside okay so your radii is going to be differ and it is not going going to be same for every location it is going to be changed every time you change the location okay then one more thing is important here is that the shape the shape of a cell which you had seen that it is a complete hexagon but remember that it is just used in the theoretical concept okay it is not in the practical your your shape is going to be changed and it is not going to be a shape of a cell is not going to be uh, a perfect or you can say never perfect never perfect okay never perfect circle it is not going to be never perfect a circle never perfect going to be hexagon or any other circle or any other shape okay it depends on it depends on it depends on the environment it depends on the environment weather condition and sometimes on the system load so these are the you know some of the dependability on which your uh, shape of a cell it depends on okay so your shape of a cell is never going to be circle or never going to be any other shape okay it is not going to be hexagon this hexagon that we had taken here it is used just for the theoretical purpose why because we have to do so many calculations just like frequency allocation call routing like that like that okay for that reason we have to take some shape and that's why this hexagon is you know simplified uh, uh, simplified shape to understand frequency that's why we had taken you know this shape but it is not going to be circle hexagon or any other shape it's just for the uh, theoretical purpose and for you know immense high computational calculation uh, we use this uh, shape but rather in practical we never use uh, the shape okay okay now the question arises that why why access point or why towers why towers why instead of towers why don't we use powerful transmitters the question is this why don't we use powerful transmitters why towers you know actually towers is very expensive you know you should understand it is an infrastructure uh, system a very high efficient infrastructure and your towers is going to be very expensive then why don't we use instead of you know instead in a in a in a very in a in a, in a cell why are we using so many transmitters why are we using it but instead you use one single transmitter give efficient power and make a powerful transmitter to efficiently gives you the connection why don't we use it what's the reason well the reason is pretty simple and this complete this question actually this complete question it leads to uh, a concept known as not a concept but uh, a kind of basic thing uh, for advantages and disadvantages this leads to advantages and disadvantages of the cellular system so let's understand that why instead of powerful transmitter we can use towers and can make our cellular system advantages to the users let's understand it so i have a concept of advantage here so let's discuss the advantage of cellular system actually there are so many but i will list the important one so advantage of cellular system the first advantage is it gives you higher capacity by means of higher capacity i'll explain you this complete concept it, it, it's huge actually so let's understand higher uh, higher capacity so you see in my previous session i told you about electromagnetic spectrum 
this is my electromagnetic spectrum and we precisely use our radio band and microwave band from this location this is my radio band here this is actually a band and in a band we have frequencies right so this is our radio band and from the band we provide frequencies to the users now the problem here in the in this electromagnetic spectrum is we have a very very minuscule band okay and i cannot provide a particular frequency let me write it down here a particular frequency to a particular user to a particular user so it's like if i have if i have 10 kilo, if i have a 10 hertz frequency then i will then i will give it to the first user then again 20 hertz to the to the second user then 30 hertz to the third user this is not possible for me how can i go it, it is going to be you know it is going to be stop somewhere there there must be a threshold where i have to stop but i have a millions user you understand this i have millions and billions user then i don't have millions frequencies or the billions frequency i cannot do that i have a threshold point where i have to stop where my frequency is going to be stopped so instead of this this is this is actually a constraint here why because if i if i cannot allocate a particular frequency to a particular user that means i must have a limited capacity of the user so this is the problem here limited capacity of the user why because i don't have the million frequencies to allocate it to to million users i have a very small amount of frequencies that i can provide to the small amount of uh, users this is the this is the problem and because of that reason i have a limited capacity of the user but we have a concept called as let me just change the change the color i have a concept called as frequency reuse i have a concept called as frequency reuse now understand this what do you mean by frequency reuse that means uh, you can use your frequencies like uh, like you can reuse your frequencies what i mean to say is if i if i give 10 hertz to a particular user here then if i give 20 hertz to another user here then again i can use this frequency this particular frequency here to give it to the third user and then again i I'll use 20 hertz for the fourth user. Again, I can use 10 hertz for fifth user. So you see here, I am reusing my frequencies. This is the reuse frequency. Can you see this? I am reusing my frequencies here. And again, 20 hertz here. So this is a concept called as frequency reuse. And why this is important is in, it is in the practical scenarios right now. We are using generally this concept. And why this why this is advantageous is because now I can use this frequency reuse concept and I can particularly give the reuse frequencies to the users. And what it leads to, I can have million frequencies now and I can have I can allocate to the million users which leads to something called as higher capacity which i which i was talking about can you understand this i hope you are getting it as now i can reuse my frequency which i which i earlier in the system i cannot use it now in this concept i can reuse my frequencies and because of that reason i can allocate to not now to the very limited user i can allocate it to the large mass and because of that mass i have the higher capacity here this is the thing so you are getting it i hope you are getting it but the problem arises in the frequency reuse the problem arises is i will give you the scenario of a problem so what happens in frequency use the problem in frequency reuse i will abbreviate it as fr for frequency reuse so the problem is i have a transmitter antenna here can you see this this is my tx and this is going to be my another antenna which is used for reception purpose this is going to be my rx and this particular this tx and rx is in some cell okay i'm not drawing that that cell just understand it now what exactly happened i have a user here this is me or any uh, anyone you want to 
okay so now this particular transmitter uh, so the problem is one more thing uh, i need to create one more antenna here this is this is one more tx okay so you see as i told you about uh, the frequency reuse concept so if this particular transmitter uh, you know sending a signal to this particular user let's say it is 40 kilohertz okay and this transmitter also sending a signal of 40 kilohertz now here is this problem the problem is if you are sending two signals from two antennas but at different time at different time if you are sending it then there is no problem it will work precisely but if you are sending signals sending signals at same time you are if you are transmitting signals at the same time then this leads to a problem called as interference i hope you are getting it why because if in the same time you are sending 40 kilohertz here also it is 40 kilohertz at some point of time these frequencies are going to be cross each other and this leads to something called as interference which i talk to you which i uh, talk to you about okay so this is the problem here in frequency reuse so uh, we have different strategies to remove it but this is not a, a point of you know a time to discuss it just understand that this is the problem okay now let's uh, get to the second advantage of cellular system which says the higher uh, sorry not higher it is less transmission power this is our second advantage now you see how this can be the advantage is power is a big problem for the base station so you see this transmitter has to propagate some signal to the to the mobile station or to some device this is my mobile he have to propagate the signal right so that's that's the reason it needs a very high amount of power it needs a very high amount of power and because of this power he can propagate the signal to this user this is the reason now here is this problem for this base station the power is going to be problem every time okay every time it is going to be problem but with the cellular system we, we are not talking about this base station in the cellular system we are not talking about but instead we are talking about this mobile station we are very concerned to this mobile station so the thing is in my previous session also i i, I told you about this but let's understand uh, one more time so here is this idea so this is the tower here if you are very near if you are very near to the near to the transmitter then very near to the transmitter i will precisely write it down very near to tx or transmitter good communication or good signal strength okay if it is a good signal strength you see here if you are very near to the base station then it is going to be good signal strength and your mobile station or your mobile device needs small amount of power small amount of power to grab the signal you getting it so if you are very near to the base station then your mobile station doesn't need that much of power to grab the signal it needs a very lesser amount of power that's the thing now let's take the other scenario the other scenario uh, let me have some space here so other other scenario is if your base station is here it's here somewhere and you are somewhere here right so what will happen this antenna needs to propagate a larger amount of distance here and as it covers larger amount of distance so right let me write it down very far to the very far from tx less signal strength this is the problem and the problem arises here is mobile station needs here mobile station needs larger amount of power larger amount of power 
to grab the signal here. So you understand the difference? So this is the problem here. If you are very near to the base station, then there will be a good signal and it needs a very small amount, uh, small amount of power to grab the signal. But as you are very far away from the base station, uh, the antenna needs to propagate a distance to you know uh, uh, to reach those signals to the mobile station then it ne then your mobile device needs a larger amount of power to grab that signal and how can cellular system can resolve the resolve the problem it it will it will it will precisely put the antennas in these in this cell uh, you know precisely and efficiently that it can cover up you or your mobile station in a precise manner right so then your mobile station doesn't need uh, that amount of power to grab the signal it will put the put those antennas in a very efficient manner so that your mobile station needs doesn't need large amount of power to grab the signal okay this is the advantage of cellular system you understand this two concept these two you know uh, scenarios if you are very near then there would be a small amount of power but if you are very far away then you need a very large amount of power to grab the signal you're getting it and how can it be resolved by efficiently and precisely uh, put your antennas in a cell so that your mobile station needs a very small amount of power it can be calculated okay the the, the people who plan this complete architecture they will precisely put the antennas in a way okay so uh, let's understand the uh, the uh, the third one and third one is exactly is known as robustness and robustness says it is very easy to understand if one antenna fails if your one antenna fails this only this only influence this only influence communication within a small area within a small area so you are getting it if in the cell if one antenna fails then that put that that smaller particular area is going to be affected not the larger uh, area is going to be affected this is also an advantage uh, with uh, that cellular system is giving you okay so these are the three uh, most precise uh, advantage of uh, the cellular system okay now let's understand the disadvantages so the disadvantages now what are the disadvantages so the first disadvantage is known as infrastructure as you understand that your cellular system needs you know a large amount of infrastructure so it is going to be what it is going to be very costly this is the problem you cannot purchase it right so uh, for that reason you need an organization who can who is handling the uh, the cellular system or stuff like that then it can be you know it can be purchased but as an individual i don't think you can purchase it so this is a very uh, you know costly infrastructure model there is a problem so why is it costly is because you need a mobile station i mean that can be purchased but then you need an and base station then you need antennas then the most <laughs> precise thing that you need is something called as geographic area how in the hell you can purchase it this is going to be a problem in a country like india this is going to be a problem you cannot purchase it right you, I mean you need a high amount of financial services for this so you cannot purchase geographic area and rest is rest is I mean it's going to be affected right so this is the problem the second thing is we just understand the second thing is something called as handover so handover needed you understand handover is it is actually a solution not a problem okay uh, so I'll give you the handover the the problem what is what exactly happens in handover it says it says if you are having a car here oh let me draw it my circle uh, my rectangle or my square is not going to be same so this is a car so let me let me label it this is a car and you are sitting inside this car okay so you are sitting inside this car and you are having a connected call so you are talking with someone okay okay so you are you are in a connected call and you are moving with a velocity v 
okay you are you are in a car and you are moving with a velocity v and you are also connected you are you are in a connected call so what happened so this car is 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 at the cell one let me precisely uh, labeled it so this is in cell one and here is the cell two okay so your car is moving with the velocity v and it is moving from cell one to cell two so when it reaches here your car is going to be reaches here there is a problem there is a disruption okay there is a disruption there is a disruption in the network there is a disruption in the network which leads to disconnecting the call okay you had seen this that when you move from one city to another city you are changing your location you are you are moving from one cell to another cell and there is a problem there is no network at all i'll write it down here it's no network you had seen this right so many times you had seen this this is the problem and we can solve with the help of handover we have to handle this communication we have to handle this network from cell 1 to cell 2 so that this disruption or no network thing is going to be resolved okay so that's why we need efficient handover mechanisms we have and we will see in our gsm and gprs chapter but right now this is the problem so you are in a connected call moving with a velocity v from cell 1 to cell 2 there is no network at all and we can solve this problem with the help of handover mechanisms okay so this is the second disadvantage and now let's get to the third disadvantage what what third third disadvantage says it it says frequency planning frequency planning what this topic says that as i told you something about interference as i told you about interference and how this interference works is that at a transmitter at the same time your second transmitter is also using the same frequencies 40 40 to the same user or to the other user then at a point of time there would be a point of time that these two frequencies going to be you know interfere with each other and that's the point we call it as interference okay so we need to plan our frequencies that you know that your your one channel or your one cell is using 10 then the second cell should not use the same frequency this is not possible but instead what we can do we need to we need to provide a different frequency then it is possible to have an effective communication so this is my second cell then i will provide 20 here also if i have one more cell then it should not be 10 this is going to be wrong again because these two frequencies are again going to be uh, going to be interfere with each other and then there would be a problem of interference so instead of 10 i will not use 20 here too if you use 20 then th this is a problem here 20 20 then i can precisely use 30 or something like that right this is possible but if you use 10 and 20 then again this system is going is going to lead to interference so this is this is frequency planning says that to avoid the interference using the same frequencies we have to distribute frequencies very carefully to avoid the interference you have to distribute frequencies in an efficient manner so these are some of the advantages and disadvantages that we had seen precisely in this session i hope you understand it if you have any doubt you can comment me in the comment section i will also refer some other sources and i put into the description section i hope you you will like it uh, thank you so much for listening to me and if you haven't subscribed my channel i insist you please you i insist you to please subscribe my channel and i also insist you to please go through the other videos uh, i'll also uh, you know put this uh, videos in my end screen so that you can you know see and watch it uh, thank you so much